everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Chloe. I make books about videos. That's not right. I make videos about books. I like to talk about books. Today's video, I hear you ask, what is today's video? Well, you probably already know because it's in the title. If you somehow clicked on this video without looking at the title, then today's video is going to be my video for the the bar and the bookcase tag. That's what it's called. I was tagged by two very lovely people, two of my very good friends who are on booktube. The first time around I was tagged by T with Leah and that was a while ago and I still haven't filmed it. I did tell her that it would take a while and now I'm here and very very recently like today i was tagged again by sarah lorraine reeves i don't know why i always struggle to say people's names and the very very funny thing is that sarah actually was tagged by leah in her video so i've been tagged by someone who tagged another person who also tagged me so there's a little tidbit for you usually i mean i, I say usually i've only ever watched two of these videos i've only watched leah's and sarah's video and in Leah's video, Leah being the very put together, well thought out person that she is, she made this lovely Aperol spritz, I think it's called, with cocktail. Listen, I'm a student. I am living on a budget. I can't afford to buy 15,000 different bottles of alcohol. And I know that there's some cocktails that are like quite easy to make, but like, no, I, too much effort for me, too much effort for me. So. I do have alcohol, don't you worry, I do have alcohol, I'm not that crazy. Not that you're crazy if you don't drink alcohol. I'm, we're just, we're gonna sidestep past that. I have, as you could probably tell, I've got Malibu here. This is literally the only alcohol I own and it's the only sort of spirit or whatever this is, is it a liqueur, is it a spirit? I don't know the difference, it's a liqueur. It's the only sort of alcohol that I, feel inclined to own in my house. In my house? I don't live in a house, I live in an apartment. Anyway, it's the only alcohol I feel inclined to own, so therefore I'm going to, with my leftover Pepsi bags, I'm going to mix them together in a glass and that's what I'm going to drink. As I said, I've literally only just, I haven't even finished watching, why am I still holding this? I'm like an alcoholic. I have only, I haven't even finished Sarah's video yet. But I decided just, you know, out of the blue to film this. So I haven't thought about the answers. I'm just gonna go off the top of my head. The lighting's probably pretty crap. But we're gonna go for it. We're gonna we're gonna try it. So I'm gonna start off. I feel like a weirdo. Not too much, because like shit, that's okay. Let's hope it's not too strong. It's got crystals on the top because it's been sitting there for so long. Now that I've made my drink to be sipping on while I'm answering these questions, I don't actually know how many questions there are. I'm just going to go through them. I'm going to try and think of a, a book. If it doesn't fit the prompt very well, then like, oh well. <laughs> That's all I can say. But let's just get into it. The first prompt is for the old fashioned, which the only reason... <laughs> The only reason I know what an old fashioned is, is because there's a Panic at the Disco song called Old Fashioned, so we love that. The prompt for Old Fashioned is a historical fiction recommendation. I don't read a lot of historical fiction, but one book that I think is classified as historical... <laughs> one book that is, I think, classified as historical fiction, which definitely takes place in the past because it takes place in the 1950s I believe or like it sort of has like it spans a bit of time but like it sort of starts off in the 1950s so I count it as historical fiction because of that and that is The Devil All The Time by Donald Ray Pollock. I read this last year, I loved it. It's just, it's like it's so good. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I borrowed it from the library so I really need to get my hands on it but I don't want to try and explain it because it's too complex of a story and I would just fuck it up. The Devil All The Time 
in very few words follows the life of a boy and like just the situations are very unfortunate for him. Bad things happen in his life, bad things happen to the people around him and there's different storylines. There's also a storyline with a couple that are serial killers which you know really intrigued me, me being the weirdo that I am um, and another storyline and they all just kind of converge and I really enjoy that. The next prompt is for the sidecar and that is a book with a strong supporting character. So for a book with a strong supporting character, I'm kind of in two minds, but I think I'm gonna have to go with Battle Royale. I don't know if this is kind of a cop out though, because technically there's not actually just one main character, like technically they're all main characters, but all of the characters in this book are strong. They're like strong, strong characters just to be in the situation that they're in. There's a group that's kind of central to the plotline and then the people around it are more like the side characters. So going off of that logic, this has got tons of really strong side characters or supporting characters. The next drink is Manhattan and the prompt for the Manhattan is a book set in New York and I'm going to be a bit basic. Listen, I haven't read that many books that are set in New York. I'm going to say A Little Life by Hanya Yen and Kahara. Um, I've spoken about this before. I absolutely love this book. I gave it five stars. I really need to reread it at some point. It is so amazing. This follows a group of friends that move to New York. And like, I think you've probably heard of A Little Life. If you haven't, then you, you're kind of lucky not to have heard of it so far because you know, there's certain things that are associated with the book and I would have liked to go into it without having known those things. But I enjoyed this nonetheless. I thought it was just such a good book and Honey and Kahara's writing in this is absolutely amazing. So that's a book set in New York. This one is, I think, my, one of my mum's favourite drinks. Or at least she used to, she used to drink them a lot. I make my mum sound like an alcoholic. My mum's not an alcoholic. <laughs> um... Bloody Mary, which always confused me because I was like, why do you want to drink tomato juice? Why? That doesn't make any sense. Isn't there like Tabasco in it or something? I don't know. I don't know. Bloody Mary, a book that scared you or messed you up. So if you know me, you probably know that I don't really get scared or messed up. I... I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, if souls exist, I question the existence of my soul because like I just I just don't get messed up by things that you know would typically mess other people up like I find those kind of things really intriguing and I don't know why I'm not a bad person don't come for me but <laughs> things don't really mess me up so we're gonna go for like a, a different kind of route and you will know if you've watched my vlogs recently you will know that I read this book and that it affected me a lot more than I thought it would. Right now I'm sort of going off of books that I've read more recently. A book that truly did actually mess me up is My Dark Vanessa. Like 100% it's, it's soul destroying. Like it's so sad and it's so just the fact that stuff like this happens because you know that it happens. You read it and you know it's real. You know that there's other people that have been through this. And it's just, it's sad and it's as I said soul destroying if I do have a soul and not much else to say I went on a bit of a different approach because I think a lot of people will go for a book that's like scary um but this messed me up in other ways for the espresso martini a book that kept you reading into the night I I actually don't know we're gonna have to do a little I actually don't know if any book was going to keep me up into the night. I don't know if that, I can't remember if I actually did. But like if going off of the notion that keeping some, keeping you up into reading into the, that I can't talk. Going off the notion that reading into the night would mean that you were really, really captivated by the book. Then I'm going to go with Bunny. This isn't a surprise. I'm not going with anything that's like super out there because... I just love this book and if any book was going to keep me reading into the night it was Bunny. So much fun, I don't want to explain it because it's crazy. Um, <laughs> but 
but like I'm sure if you've heard of Bunny or if you've read it you would know what I mean like it's so captivating so much fun so captivating really interesting next one a Sazerac what the hell is that Sazerac that's that I like that name I might get a dog and call it Sazerac no, I'm just kidding the Sazerac a book that left you disorientated or as Americans say disoriented Americans I'm talking to you why did you have to cut out a couple of letters like why I don't like my brain does not comprehend no but like seriously like I'm not taking the piss but <laughs> I do wonder why American why the American English language decided to cut out certain letters weird anyway um a book that left me disorientated um there's one that i've read recently that i can sort of that i think that i could choose mm, i guess sort of one of the more natural answers would be to go with like a mystery or a thriller let's go with this one i don't hear a lot of people talk about this book that much now a couple of years ago this was like all the right um, the Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. Like, this is a mystery, so it makes sense why it would leave me disorientated. It was just confusing, and I was trying to figure out what was going on, and I don't think I could. I don't really remember much about it. I want to give this a reread, but I'm pretty sure I was disorientated by this, so let's go with this one. Actually, do you know what? Another one. Just another one. Just to throw something else in there. Um, I'm thinking of ending things could also definitely fill that prompt. Um, this could also go for keeping you up into the night, I think. Just to have like a little bit of an honourable mention, I also love this book, it's so good. Long Island Iced Tea. A book that is doing too much. <sighs> Listen, I think a lot of people that have read some of Stephen King's bigger books would probably say that. But I'm, I'm not going to say that because I love them. I'm going to go with Trust Exercise by Susan Choi. This book doesn't do too much in, in terms of like quantity. Like it doesn't, I don't think that the author was trying to do too much. But I think that the author was dry, trying to do more than they could handle. Like I don't think that she fully understood how to take this premise and actually execute it properly. So that's why I'm going to go with this one. I think the author just tried to make this really twisty and turny and like feel like a masterpiece, which it would have if it was written by someone else that actually knew what they were doing. Although like, no offense to Susan Choi, I'm sure like, I'm sure she can do other stuff that's great, but I think that she just bit off a bit more than she could chew with this one. A Negroni, a book with a love triangle. I, I don't actually think I've got any, I can't really think of any books that actually do have like a proper love triangle. Like I, I don't have any romances here and I feel like romance would be the natural genre to go for. I'm going to go with The Hunger Games. <laughs> I'm thinking technically, technically, like a very small technicality that there's a love triangle between Peter and Katniss and Gail. I don't actually believe in that but like this is the closest I can come to it so like don't but no seriously I can't think of anything else so I will have to go with this even though like technically there's not really anything between Katniss and Gail but I don't know <laughs> Babe Breeze a book with light chill slash heartwarming vibes I think the best answer to that is gonna have to be heart heart warmer that's not what I meant to say. It's going to be Heartstopper. I've talked about this multiple times on my channel. I'm not going to say anything else. You probably know why I would choose this for a heartwarming or a, a light chill vibe. It's cute. It is super cute. It's a graphic novel. I love the art style. I love the whole thing. It's cute and heartwarming. It's a heartstopper. <laughs> uh, dark and Stormy, a book that's dark, thrilling and menacing. Well, I, listen, we've got quite a few different to go with. Anything that Stephen King has written would probably fit that prompt, but I've got to go with my, uh, my, my love, my love, it. 
my favourite Stephen King book, if you were unaware. Do I need to explain why it's dark and stormy and menacing? It literally opens with a storm, <laughs> I think, technically. Like, it opens with a storm, and then he goes out with his little boat, and then he, and he gets his arm taken off. And if that's a spoiler, then, like, where, where what, what universe do you live on? But, no, yeah, it, I would have to go with it. Martini, a classic recommendation my classics are up here because i don't tend to reach for them just because i really like the story and i like the concept of it and i believe the author is scottish which gives it points like scottish scottish stuff gives extra points yeah he was born in edinburgh so you know he was born in edinburgh that makes him 10 times cooler um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. So this uh, edition is actually um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and some other stories. But like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in itself, I recommend that as a classic. I love it. Like I, I need to reread this, but I really, really enjoyed it. It's um, Victorian literature, I guess. And I just, I really enjoy Victor the Victorian setting and it's kind of gothic in itself and like i think everyone kind of knows the concept of dr jekyll and mr hyde and that whole sort of idea and that sort of motif i really enjoy oh <gasps> i'm done i'm done i'm done i'm done i should tag people in this um <laughs> i'm trying to think who hasn't been tagged before of my friends so mm, let's think people that i probably don't that I think probably haven't been tagged in this before. I am, um, let's go with three people because three is a magic number. Um, first of all, I will tag Emily from, <laughs> why is your channel name so long? The um, Three Bears Book Cottage, that's what it's called. Obviously link it down below. Um, and then I will tag Lucy from Library of Lucy. And third and finally, I will tag Rachel from Amatentia Reads, which like is a sick name. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave all of their links, tags, stuff like that down in the description box. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you wanna make this tag and I haven't actually tagged you and you haven't been tagged by anyone else, then feel free to do it anyway. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in my next one.